Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a tutorial on how to use the program NanoCAD. So we're going to be teaching you today how to draw your knives in a CAD program. Uh, I use this all the time. Uh, sometimes I'll draw it on paper and then I'll even transfer it into CAD so that I have a repeatable print and so that I can easily share them via PDFs and things like that. And I like having them stored on my computer so I can re-access those files in the future. So you can see I have tons of printouts of knives and I also like to print it out and glue it to pieces of wood to use as templates for knives so I don't have to keep printing it. I can just print it out here, grind it to shape, and then trace out my knife. So I like using CAD for that purpose. This video may be a little slow at times so I'm going to put timestamps in the first comment down below so that you can skip around if you want to. If you don't, uh, that's fine. But if you're a complete noob at using CAD, this video is for you. So with that, let's get started. First things first, you'll have to go to nanocad.com backslash products and you can scroll down to the bottom of this page and find the download free version here. Once you have this downloaded, you just execute the file and it will install NanoCAD. Note that it does take a little bit of time for NanoCAD to download from their site. I guess they just have really slow servers uh, that, that may be a lot of traffic, I don't know. Uh, but it will take a while to get it downloaded. When you open NanoCAD, this is the first thing that you're going to see. Uh, just a blank slate. Go ahead and click this new document button and you will open up a blank slate to start drafting in. Um, the first thing we're going to go over is kind of how to get this set up so that you can start doing your drafting. Then we'll go over the basic objects and then our basic tools. We'll draw a knife, uh, we'll dimension it, and then we'll go over uh, how to print it. So first things first, how do we get this set up? Uh, I would go up here into Format and Units, and you want to make sure that you're in the units that you'd like to be using. Uh, for our case, let's go to Inches, so we'll be in Inches here. Uh, decimal's fine, I don't know if we need this level of precision. And that's it, Cl click OK after that. So now we're in Inches. Uh, you can also see at the bottom here we have a bunch of options, and you can copy what I've done here uh, to make it easy on you. But what I what I first thing you do is I make sure that the snap and the grid are both turned on, off, both turned off. Uh, the grid kind of does uh, puts a grid on your workspace, and then snap basically means that it will snap to that grid. So if I go to draw a line, you can see that it's snapping to the grid that it's on the page, and I, I don't want that. So I'm going to turn both of those things off. This O snap stands for object snap. And this will allow you to snap to the middle or the end or the tangent of objects. So if you right click on O snap, you have all these options on what it will snap to. So for instance, we'll go over drawing the line in a second, but say I have some lines here and I want to draw a new line on the center of this one. You can see that this little green triangle pops up, which means that it will snap to the midpoint of that line. I can start my line from that point. Alright, so that's O, and then there's O track. Uh, this is uh, toggling on and off this uh, uh, object tracking, which I'm not really sure what some of these do. Uh, I just have them on, I don't mess with them. So uh, I think that's as far as in depth we need to go there. So let's start drawing some things. First things first, a line. This is probably the most basic unit in this program or object, I guess. Uh, you just click on this little line button here or you can use your hotkeys, it's Control alt l click on the starting point of that line and then the ending point of the line and then it allows you to keep clicking and drawing lines from that point. Now these lines are not in any specific angle or dimension so you're just kinda eyeing it. If you want to draw specific lines go ahead and click on the line icon again click where you want your line to start go into the direction that you want to draw your line. So say I want to draw a straight line here and then you can just type in, uh, say I want to draw a five inch line. Type in five, you'll see it show up in the bottom here in this text box. So type five and then press enter and it will draw a five inch line. And you can see that I'm pretty zoomed out here, so let's zoom in. All right, so this line is five inches long. So you can do the same thing in the bottom direction. So let's say we want to draw a five inch line starting at the midpoint here. So I have the object snap on, I snap to the midpoint, click, and then come in the downward direction. And then while my mouse is hovering there, I will type five, enter, 
and it draws a five inch line down. So that is how you get some lines drawn there. Um, the next thing we're gonna draw is a circle. So you click on the circle button. This is circle by center and radius. What that means is that your first click will be the center of the circle and then you can enter in the radius of the circle. So if I want a five inch circle, I'll go ahead and type in 2.5, press enter, and it will draw a five inch diameter circle. So that's pretty, pretty easy as well. Harkening uh, back to our snap, you can see that I can snap to this circle um, in the quadrant mode, or if you see that little circle with a line over it, that's a tangent. Uh, so it will snap to the tangent as well. And then it can snap to the nearest, uh, nearest intersection as well. So you got a lot of different snap options. If you ever find that's too much, you can turn some of those snap options off by just right clicking here and toggling them on and off. Okay, so that's a circle. Uh, we'll go ahead and do one more. We'll do the arc. Uh, the arc is basically, uh, it's a line that bends. So we'll make our first point, then our middle point and our last point. So this will make an arc. To adjust this arc, you can click on it, left click on it and go ahead and click on this middle point and you can drag this around to change the arc. You can also move these around by left clicking on them to change their location. Okay, so that's the basics of drawing shapes. Uh, the next thing we'll talk about are how to uh, select items and shapes on your drafting page. So you've seen me move around here a little bit and I will select items or select multiple items by clicking and dragging. Now I want you to note something here that uh, just clicking and dragging like this will work. However, there is a slight difference between clicking and dragging from the top left to the bottom right and clicking and dragging from the bottom left, bottom right to the top left. Uh, there's actually more than a slight difference, it's a huge difference and you will use it when you're drafting anything in here a lot. So this is the major difference. If you're clicking in the bottom, if you're clicking in the top left and then you're dragging to the bottom right, you will only select everything that is in your box. So notice that both of these items in this T shape here are selected, both of these lines. If I move this box up a little bit, that bottom line will no longer be selected when I, when I click again. So I click again, the bottom line is not selected. That's when you're clicking from the top left and dragging to the bottom right. However, if you click from the bottom right and drag to the top left, anything that touches the box will be selected. So notice that I am not encompassing this bottom line. However, it will also be selected if I go from the bottom right to the top left. So that is very handy. So for instance, I'll do it again with this arc, top left to bottom right. The whole item is not selected. So the whole item is not in the box, so it won't be selected. And the whole item's in the box, it will be. And then from the bottom right to the top left, just a little portion of that item is selected and it will select the whole item. So that's, that's the selecting difference there. Uh, that will come in handy when you're drafting. Uh, the next thing I wanna show are some basic commands. So the first thing we'll do is we'll make a, a random shape with lines, we'll make a triangle here, and then say I wanna copy this item. So the first thing I will do is I will select the item, then I will type copy. In the bottom uh, bar there, you can just start typing commands and it will automatically put it in your command prompt at the bottom there. Type copy, press enter, and then it will ask you what point do you want to copy from, or I guess uh, what's your base point here. So I'll, I'm gonna want my base point to be the bottom left of this triangle, because then I'm gonna put this triangle right next to itself. So I'm gonna click, I'm gonna click that point, and then you can move, you can place this triangle wherever you want it. So if I wanna put it here, you can and you can paste it as many times as you like. To get out of this mode, you just press escape. So that is how you copy something. Uh, let's delete something. So we can select these bottom triangles, just press the delete button, it's deleted. Now say I want to mirror these items. So I have three triangles here and I want another three triangles over here to the left. So I'll go ahead and select all of these triangles, type in mirror, press enter. I want to mirror around this point. So I left click and then it's going to ask for the axis in which I want to mirror. So you notice uh, you can go all the way around here, 
but if you just go straight up and down, it will mirror it to the left. So that's what I want to do. Click that. And then the last thing it will ask is, do you want to erase the source content? So I'm going to say no, because I want both sets of triangles. And there you go. I have a mirrored set of triangles. So that actually uh, comes in handy while, we're draw while we are drawing some knives here. So I'm going to select and delete all those. Lastly, I want to show you the fillet uh, option. If you have two lines, and this is a little finicky every once in a while, especially in tight spots. Uh, so if it doesn't work for you, I have a workaround. Uh, but anyway, uh, what you want to do here is select these two parts, type in fillet, and then go ahead and give the radius that you would like to use. So I'm going to use a point, uh, 0.15 inches. And then you just click the two lines. I zoomed in there. I didn't need to. You just click the two lines that you want to fillet across. And you can notice that these two lines now have a nice curvature where they meet. So let's do that again. I have two lines. I want to select these two lines. Type in fillet. Figure out what my radius is. 0.15 is great. Hit OK. And then left click left click and it puts a nice radius between those two lines. Uh, speaking of zooming, I'm using my mouse roller to zoom in and out here. Uh, if you hold down the mouse roller, it will pan. So that's a nice, a nice useful feature there. Uh, if you run into problems with the fillet tool, especially with very small uh, tight corners, one, ob one uh, option I've used in the past and I may use while we're drawing this knife today is to simply draw a circle, um, oops, simply draw a circle of the size uh, radius that I would want in my curve, and then kind of eye it here. I mean, we're not doing super precision parts here when we're drawing out knife blanks, so I'll just kind of eye it into this uh, into this corner, and then we're going to use our last tool that we're going to talk about, which is the trim tool. So I'm just going to eye it so that they're just touching close enough and then we're going to trim so what I want is I want to end with a nice radius curved here but I have this little point and I also have the bulk of the circle I want to trim those away so in order to trim you will select all the items type in trim and then left click on the items you no longer want so I no longer want this guy I don't want this guy and I don't want the bottom of this circle so now I have a nice curve there now you notice that it's not super precision the way we just did that uh, because we have a little bit of overlap. Uh, so to make this a little nicer, I guess you can come up here and figure out uh, where the tangent to the circle is and connect this line there. Uh, but in reality, we're talking about a very, very small difference. So when you zoom out, I mean, I think this is only a couple inches. That circle right here is one inch. So uh, you won't notice this in your drawing. Uh, if, if the fillet tool doesn't work for you and you, you can't be as precise as, say, this curve here. So now we have all of the tools gone over. Uh, we did, went over copy, move. Oh, we didn't go over move. Let's do move real fast. So say I want to move this circle. There's a couple options here. Uh, there's the built-in option of moving a circle by clicking on the center. So you can just click the center and move the circle around. But... Uh, not all shapes have that, and if you have a complex structure of shapes, say we have all these and we want to move this as a unit, uh, it won't work by just clicking the center here. You'll just move the circle. So say I have all these units selected and I want to move them. Type in move. It will ask you the point at which you want to move this system from. So say I want to move it from right here, and then you can move this around and say put it wherever you want, right there maybe. So now I've moved that to the right. So that's the move option. So we've gone over copy, move, trim, mirror, and fillet. So let's start off and draw a knife. So before we get started on drawing a knife, what I like to do is I like to kind of draw out my template that I'll be printing. So I print normally on 8.5 by 11 paper. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw out a um, eight and a quarter, just to give myself a little margin. Let's see. Control Z for undo, <laughs> 8.25 by, let's just say 11, and we'll draw it a little square here to draw in. So notice what I'm doing here, I am hovering over this endpoint, 
it's snapping to that endpoint and then dragging my mouse and it is suggesting this straight line and I'm going to go ahead and use that and I make a perfect square. So this is what we'll be printing. This would be our piece of paper. And then we're going to draw a knife here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a fairly uh, simple knife. It's a knife that I make a lot. Uh, it's my Skinner. So when I'm drawing a knife in here, I'll use the lines as guides. So for instance, if I want my knife to be uh, seven and a quarter long, I'll go ahead and I'll make a line here uh, 7.25 inches long. And this line is going to kind of be my guideline. And say I want that handle uh, to be about four inches long. So I'll come up here and I'll draw a four inch line as well. And I'll be able to use these lines later as uh, snap points to figure out kind of where I'm at with my drawing. So with this knife, I'm going to start off by drawing the spine. I'll go ahead and draw an arc that goes from the base of the handle all the way to the tip of the blade. So I'm going to start off somewhere around here, put my third point uh, around the middle, and then my last point, which is going to be my tip, I'm going to draw over here. So this is, uh, we can change this a little bit up later, but this actually doesn't look too bad. I want a very gradual arc in the spine of this knife. Then we'll go ahead and, uh, you know, I think I want my tip to be a little closer to the center of the knife instead of at the top. So I'll move this point down a little bit. Yeah, I like that better. Uh, next, we'll go ahead and start um, drawing the blade. So my handle, like I said earlier, is four inches. My handle is going to come through right here. So let's use the arc tool again and draw an aggressive tip here uh, for my blade. Now, you know, I want my blade to be about an inch, one, about 1 1.2 inches wide, uh, depending on the stock you're using. Obviously, that will depend. Uh, but say I'm using an inch and a quarter stock, so I want it to be about 1.2 wide to give me just a little bit of room. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a little guideline here at 1.2. So that's as thick as I want my blade in the thickest spot. Uh, so I'm going to have my blade, let's see, so this is going to be in front of my handle here. I'm going to have this guy, I'm just going to draw a straight line. I'm going to take this arc that we just made and I'm going to connect that arc to this line in a nice smooth fashion so that it is uh, flow, so it flows nicely. So that looks uh, pretty good. So now that I have two lines here and I want to trim off some excess. So I'm going to select both those lines. I'm going to type in trim and I'm going to trim off this tail here. So that came out nice. All right, so the front of my handle scales, I want to be right here. So let's go ahead and, uh, hmm, let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and draw uh, where your front finger will go when you're grasping this knife. So in this case, I have a two inch idler wheel on my belt sander. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a two inch, a two inch circle here that's gonna be used for, I guess, our finger, our main finger choil. So I'm doing it by the radius. So I'll type in one, press enter. Now I have a two inch circle. I'll move this circle by the center. And you know, I think I want uh, the, I don't need that anymore. I think I want the skinniest part of my blade to be around an inch, maybe. So let's see, I'll draw down an inch. Uh, that's a little much. Maybe I'll go a little less than that. Maybe, uh, I'm, sure, you know, I'm just gonna do this by eye. I think I want that to be about as thin as I go, which probably is around an inch I just drew. And I'm gonna move this circle, uh, which you know, is the same diameter as my idler wheel. I'm just gonna move it up here so it intersects the blade edge and this line. So maybe something like this. Yeah, that looks okay. So then I'm gonna go delete that line uh, my guideline here, I can also delete. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and draw out the back side of my blade. So I'm going to take the arc. Uh, and uh, you can adjust all these lines throughout the process. So I'm just kind of getting the basics in here and then we'll adjust it at the end. So I'll just come on down here with my arc feature, uh, center, and then maybe, uh, maybe down here somewhere. I have a circle, half circle there. And then I'll take the arc feature again. I'll pick somewhere around the center top of the circle. 
the middle and then the bottom of that. So you can kind of see it taking shape here. So then we can start adjusting some things. So I won't say I want to have this will have a little bit more sweep to it. And maybe I want, uh, you know, maybe I want this circle to come up a little more. So let's do that. Yeah, I like that better. I don't like this sweep anymore. So you can start moving some things around here just by clicking on the endpoints. So yeah, I like that a little better. Uh, let's see, this may be a little exaggerated. Yeah, so that's a decent basic look there. And like I said, you know, you make these your own. You can play around with the design as much as you want. Uh, okay, so next step here, we need to get rid of this circle and we also need to get rid of this overlap here. So I'm gonna select everything. I'm gonna type in trim, come down here. I'm gonna trim that little tail and I'm gonna trim the major circle. Okay, so now we have our, our basic outline. I wanted my handle scales to come up to around right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put another arc through here. Uh, maybe like this. Okay, that's gonna be the front of my handle scales. I'm gonna go ahead and press Control C and Control V for paste. And then just kind of eye uh, a quarter of an inch, I guess. And, you know, if you're doing a 45 degree angle uh, with quarter inch scales, it's going to be somewhere around there. Notice I have these little tails, so I'll select everything. I'll type trim. I'll cut off those tails. All right, nice. Now I have the front of my handle scales. Let's do our handle pins. So just like I would lay it out in the shop, I'd go ahead and draw a line through my uh, tang here of where I want that pin to be. I'm going to draw another line up here of where I want that pin to be. And then I'll draw a line from center to center. And then I'm going to find the center of that line. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I'll try to figure out. Oh, uh, well, I guess that's going to be perfect right there. OK, so these are where I'm going to put my pins. I'm going to be using quarter inch pins. Uh, so point 0.125 radius. Uh, I like to go ahead and put like a target here almost. If you're going to be using this template and gluing it to your blade stock and then center punching, it's nice to have a target. Uh, sometimes I, I don't actually, you know, a lot of times actually I don't do that. But if you will be, uh, it's nice to, to use this as a target for your center punch. Okay, so now I'm just going to type copy. I want to copy this by the center. And then I'm just going to put it at this intersection. All right, and I'm going to put another one here. And I guess I'll put another one in the middle. All right, that looks decent. I'm going to go ahead and delete these guidelines. All right, now I have three centered pins. Uh, last thing I'll do here um, is go ahead and I'm gonna put in a sharpening choil. So my, I gotta get a calculator out because my chainsaw file is 530 seconds. So I'll divide that by two. Draw my radius circle here of 0 0.078125, okay move. Now note I want to move this by the leftmost point here. And I'm just going to eye this distance uh, to what feels good. So maybe something like that. Okay, so there's my sharpening choil. Go ahead and select everything here. Type in trim. I'm going to trim the bottom and the middle. So now I have my choil. Uh, I guess you can put in a grind line just to get an idea here. Um, let's say you want your grind line to come up at a slight angle, maybe something like this. And then say you want it to come out, uh, say you want it to be pretty close to a full flat grind, maybe, maybe come out to here. And I guess you, we can try using the fillet tool here. I don't know if it's going to be too small for it to be used, but we'll go for it. Fillet, let's point, maybe 0.05. Let's see if that worked. Yeah, that worked pretty good. So now we have a nice grind line on our knife. Uh, lastly, let's try using that fillet tool again, uh, round over some of these corners. Let's see, I'll go ahead and select them. 
display 0.05 let's try that again did that work no see every once in a while there's something weird like this I don't really know why if any of you guys know why go ahead and let me know uh, we're gonna use our uh, cheat method here I'm just gonna draw a circle that's actually too small of a circle Oop. I'm gonna go ahead and draw a circle of the arc that I'm looking for maybe something like that I'll move this guy close really close okay and you know instead of cutting and trimming we can go ahead and change this line to tangent we can move we can move the endpoints of the line to the tangent in the circle like that okay and then we can go ahead select everything type trim and actually before we do that I want the same size circle so I'm just going to copy it I'm going to paste it down here somewhere trim there we go we got a nice little rounded edge I don't know if that really did that much but I guess it looks nice so we'll move this circle here go ahead and move the endpoint point line to the tangent of the circle notated by not only the word tangent but also the circle with the line over it let's see right there select it trim all right now I got some nice rounded corners on our knife here okay so now we have our knife drawn sweet next step is to dimension it so on the dimensions uh, the first thing you should probably do is modify the dimension styles if you don't it's gonna look like this I guess NanoCAD is normally made to draw much bigger things uh, so a 7.2 long blade uh, ends up looking retarded because the the text is so large uh, so to fix that we'll go over here to dimension styles and we'll go to modify and then we can change some things so the baseline spacing I'm just going to bring everything down to point 0.1 offset from origin I'm going to bring all these to point 0.1 we'll go to text point 0.1 uh, let's see what else offset from the line point 0.1 units are going to be the same in inches all right let's see how that works I'm gonna hit OK and hit close all right so I'm gonna to go to dimensions I want to dimension a horizontal distance here all right so our arrows are still huge I must have missed that let's go back to dimension styles under modify symbols and arrows arrow size there you go point one enter all right horizontal that's better We'll go ahead and click the furthest left portion of the arc here, and then we'll click the tip. So this is going to be a 2.9 inch long knife, pretty close to what we were shooting for. Uh, that arc kind of pushed it out. Uh, I also normally like to dimension uh, the distance of the handle, or the, the length of the handle scale, so I have an idea of what to cut out. Uh, maybe, maybe the stock thickness from the very tip of the spine to the bottom of the blade. Whoops. I need to go ahead and select, uh, let's see, vertical. Maybe the very top here. So about 1.2. And you know, you can dimension whatever you want here. If you want to dimension a diameter, you can click on the outside of your circle. Let's see. Maybe, maybe the center of the circle? How's that not working? Well, there you go. It's kind of weird looking, but... 0.25 inches. I'm sure we can figure out a way. Uh, maybe, maybe we can figure out a way to move this over. But anyway, uh, you can dimension the circles and whatever you want to dimension. Uh, what I normally like to do when I'm printing something like this out is I'll copy the whole thing and I'll make a few copies. So let's take some of these off. Just select delete. I'll make a few copies of the blade so that I can cut them out the way I want. And then I'll even flip one using the mirror feature. So I'll select everything, type in mirror. Select it and go 90 degrees. Click Erase Source Objects Y for Yes. So, you know, this is what I'd normally print. Cut this out, glue it to my stock, uh, start making a knife. So, to print can be a little hairy in this program. Uh, what I would advise you to do first is to go ahead and uh, utilize your printer and see if it works so let me explain what I mean there so let's uh, let's go to print 
or plot. Uh, so I already have this set up for me, but we'll go over some features here. You select your printer, uh, you, what size paper you want to use. Uh, notice that there's some pretty significant margins. Uh, so if you want to do this again, you can draw your box to be 10.76 by 8.26. Uh, and you have some options here on what it will print. Uh, you can go by display, extends, limits, window. What I like to do is I think limits, maybe extends. Well, I guess that works. That selects everything that you have drawn. If you have other stuff drawn out here, though, you can go to a window and you can go ahead and select the corners of the window that you drew. And it will select your uh, your print area there, which is nice. So go ahead with these settings. Oh, first of all, uh, have this set to uh, uncheck fit the paper and select one to one. So one inch to one inch. Print that out first and see how it does. Sometimes I think that'll work great depending on, I guess, your printer. Uh, for me, it doesn't. For me, it actually uh, undersizes things. So go ahead, print it out, measure it with a ruler. You know, measure your, uh, let's see, if you have this dimension up here from this line to this line, print out, measure it. Is it really 7.29 inches? If it's not, uh, you can make a little uh, ratio. So go back to plot and one inch is equal to something smaller and it will scale it up. So you take the uh, you take what it actually is on the paper, divide it by uh, what it should be, and you can put that factor in here so that it will print to size. So that takes a little bit of trial and error uh, to figure that out. But for me, uh, it's one to 0.97 gets me pretty damn close to uh, what actually should be one to one. So anyway, know that. I don't know why that happens, but uh, that's the workaround that I found. So after that, go ahead and click plot and you will have a sweet template of your knife to print out that's to scale. And if you ever want to make it again, you can print it again. You can print it as many times as you want. You can tweak the design. You can share it online. Uh, let me also note in the plot section, uh, you can change your plotter to PDF and you can put this on a PDF and send it to people. Uh, still utilizing this scale uh, tweak, but it works pretty good. So uh, with that, that is the end of the tutorial on how to draw a knife in NanoCAD. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments section below. If I missed something or if you would have liked to have seen something else covered, please go ahead and put it in the comments below as well. And I'll catch all y'all. Hey, so hold on one minute there. While I was editing that video, I thought about something cool. If you draw up some knives and uh, you want to see them made maybe on the channel or something like that, Go ahead and send them to me at my email, jkeatonknives at gmail.com, and uh, maybe we'll make them. So until next time, go ahead and click on some of these other videos I have on this end screen, then I'll catch you all on the flip side.